Hello viewers, welcome to UN College Digital Class. In today's class, I am going to discuss about constructor overloading and destructor in C++. In the previous class of C++, I have discussed about constructor and different types of constructor. In this class, we will discuss what is the meaning of constructor overloading and destructor in details. Let's start. Constructors can be overloaded in a similar way as function overloading. Function overloading is one interesting concept related to polymorphism. In the coming classes, I will discuss about function overloading in detail. In C++, we can have more than one constructor in a class with same name as long as each has a different list of arguments. It means that we can use multiple constructor in a class and using multiple constructor in a class is called as constructor overloading. Okay. Overloaded constructor essentially have the same name. It means that obviously constructor meaning is that it is having the same name as the class name and different number of arguments. A constructor is called depending on the number and type of arguments passed. Okay. While creating the object, arguments must be passed to let compiler know which constructor needs to be called. It means that suppose you are using a class A and you are using only one constructor and when you, are, you, you will create object at that time obviously the one constructor will be executed. But let assume that you will use two constructor, one is default and another one is parameter or two parameter, one is having two arguments, another one is having three arguments. At that time, on the basis of number of arguments you will pass, the compiler will know which constructor needs to be called. Okay. Now here I have used one example of constructor overloading. Okay. Has include IO stream using namespace std. You know all the meaning of these two lines. Then class person. Here I have used uh, one class and the name of the class is person. Okay. Inside the class person in the private section I have used int s. Then in the public part I have used one default constructor that is person. And inside the default constructor a is equal to 20. I have been initialized is equal to 20 you may initialize is with other value also no problem then i have used one parameterized constructor that is person int a then inside the block of function or constructor is a is equal to a then i have used one int get is function and the objective of int get is function is to return the is. That's all about the class. Now inside int main, I have used person 1 and person 2 to object. When we are creating person 1, as we are not passing any value to person 1, that's why default constructor will be executed. And when we are creating person 2, we are passing 45 inside the bracket and for that reason parameterized constructor will be executed. What we have discussed earlier, okay, at the time of creating object on the basis of passing parameter, compiler will decide which uh, a constructor will be executed, okay. Then I have used one integer a variable then a equal to person dot get is. It means that when we are calling person one get is at that time as the default constructor has executed for person one. It means for the first object for that reason a value will be 20. And 
when we will display by using C out, we will get output 20. Similarly, at the next statement, I have used A equal to person 2 dot get A's. At that time, get A's will return 45 because we have used 45 and here the parameter as constructor was working. That's why A's value is 45 here. So, when we will get, when we are using C out, we will get output 45 in this way this program will be executed okay now i am taking another example to explain the same constructor overloading so that you will be clear here i have used one classroom inside the classroom in the private section i have used double length double breadth uh, two variables and in the public section i have used one default constructor inside the default constructor i have initialized length equal to 6.9 then breadth equal to 4.2 then I have used another parameterized constructor room double L double B and inside the block length equal to L breadth equal to B. Then room double len. You can see here that uh, I have used three constructor. One is default, one is parameter and the second one is also parameter. But the difference is that in one parameterized constructor I am passing two double value and in another parameterized constructor I am passing single value. That's all. Then uh, I have used one calculate area method uh, which is returning one double value uh, by calculating length into breadth. Okay. Then we will discuss about main method. Inside main method what we have done, we have used three different object room 1 room 2 and room 3 room 1 uh, we are creating the object without passing any parameter for that reason default constructor will be executed and for room 2 we are passing two parameters 8.2 6.6 that's why the constructor room double l double b will be executed then for room 3 we are passing one parameter 8.2 for that reason room double len constructor will be executed in this way for room 1 uh, default constructor will be executed and for room 2 and room 3 parameterized constructor will be executed and for that reason when we will uh, use c out room 1 dot calculate area at that time uh, 6.9 and 4.2 will be calculated and output will be displayed and similarly when we will use c out room to calculate area at that time 8.2 and 6.6 .6 will be calculated and similarly uh, when we are using c out room 3 dot calculate area at that time 8.2 and 7.2 will be calculated in this way constructor will be ex is executed i hope you have got some basic concept it is very simple one in constructor overloading exactly what is happening we are using multiple constructor and on the basis of uh, passing parameters at the time of creating the object the compiler or the system will decide which constructor will be executed i hope you have got some basic idea but still if you have any doubt then please write to me in the comment box so that i can clear your doubt now i am going to discuss about destructor destructor in c++ just like constructor destructor is also a member function and it is having the same name as class name but the objective of using destructor is to destroy or delete an object and the syntax of using destructor is tilt mark class name followed by function parenthesis now i am going to discuss the properties of destructor in details
destructor function is automatically invoked when the objects are destroyed actually just like constructor when we are creating the object the constructor is executed similarly destructor is executed when the object are destroyed it cannot be declared as static or constant then the next property is the destructor does not have arguments it has no it has no return type not even void in case of constructor we may pass argument okay but in case of destructor it does not have any argument an object of a class with destructor cannot become a member of the union a destructor should be declared in the public section of the class the programmer cannot access the address of destructor now we will discuss when is destructor called a destructor function is called or invoked automatically when the object goes out of scope those are it means that when the function ends or the program ends a block containing local variable ends a delete operator called is called in all the cases automatically destructor is invoked okay now we will discuss how destructors are different from a normal member function destructor have same name as the class name preceded by a tilt then destructor don't take any argument and don't return anything in this way destructor is different now here i am going to explain destructor by using one example has include io stream using namespace std class employee inside class employee i have used one public section inside public section i have used constructor that is employee inside the block of constructor constructor invoked statement will be displayed then i have used destructor tilde mark with employee because here employee is the class name okay then inside the destructor i have used the statement see how destructor invoked then i have used uh, int main method inside main method i am using employee e1 then employee e2 return 0 actually here what happens when the program will be executed and for the first time e1 will be called at that time e1 will be created e1 is the object e1 will be created at that time constructor employee default constructor will be executed and we will get output constructor invoked similarly when we are using the statement employee e2 we are creating another object and again the constructor for employee e2 will be executed and we will get output constructor invoked and when the main method closing brace it means that when the control reaches at main method closing brace at that time destructor for e1 will be executed and output will be destructor invoked then employee e2 for e2 destructor will be executed and output will be destructor invoked in this way destructor will, will be used in a program the difference between constructor and destructor is that constructor is called at the time of memory allocation and destructor is called at the time of object memory deallocation both constructor and destructor are implicitly called by compiler even though they are not defined in the class here i have again explained some important differences in between constructor and destructor in a tabular form here i have used three different uh, column one is representing basis for comparison then constructor then the last one is destructor first i have used the measure the measuring criteria that is purpose in uh, if we will define on what basis or what is the purpose of using constructor then it allocates the memory to an object and the purpose of destructor is to deallocate the memory of an object then declaration class name arguments if any in case of constructor then the in in case of destructor 
tilled class name and empty bracket because there it is not having any argument then the next one is argument in case of constructor we may pass argument in case of destructor we cannot pass any argument then the next basis for comparison is working in case of constructor constructor allows an object to initialize some of its value before it is used but in case of destructor destructor allows an object to execute some code at the time of its destruction then the next one is in number in case of constructor there can be multiple constructor which is called as constructor overloading and just in this class we have discussed earlier and destructor there is always a single destructor in the class then the next one is uh, basis for comparison that is copy constructor uh, already i have uh, discussed about copy constructor in the previous class Cons in case of uh, constructor we can use copy constructor but uh, destructor no such concept is used okay then the next one is overloading constructors can be overloaded but destructor cannot be overloaded obviously because we cannot use multiple destructor and in this way overloading cannot be applied now i am going to explain one interesting concept associated with constructor at the time of uh, creating the object the constructor is invoked automatically okay but you can use the constructor in two different ways here i have used one example to explain that concept uh, here i have used class a inside class a in the public section i have used one integer val val is one variable then i have used one default constructor val equal to zero then i have used another parameterized constructor a int a uh, val equal to a okay and inside the uh, main method i have used a a15 this is one way of uh, calling constructor parameterized constructor then i have used another method another way of executing constructor that is a a2 equal to a5 the first one is a type of calling constructor the second one is another type of calling constructor now we will discuss about two different ways of using or calling constructor okay the first one is called as direct initialization whereas the second one is called as copy initialization now we will discuss what is direct initialization direct initialization initialize the target object directly as a single step process by finding and using an appropriate constructor suppose you are using parameterized constructor three different types of constructor it means that in case of uh, the first parameterized constructor you are passing a single argument in the second case you are passing two arguments in the third case you are passing three arguments in case of direct initialization it matches with the appropriate constructor and the appropriate constructor is executed okay but the copy initialization is conceptually is a two step process first it constructed temporary object of type a actually i have used a here to represent the class by some conversion constructor and then it copies it to the destination object by using a copy constructor you may use the two different ways which is uh, comfortable which with uh, you are comfortable with both will work okay in this class i have discussed about constructor overloading destructor the uh, what are the differences in between constructor and destructor and the ways different ways of calling the or executing the constructor i hope you have got some basic ideas about all this concept but still if you have any doubt then please write to me in the comment box so that i can clear your doubt thank you so much for watching have a great time